extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. We're back, welcome to theCUBE. We're here at Moscone North. This is VMworld 2015, and this is theCUBE. theCUBE goes out, we go to all our events, we extract the signal from the noise, and if you want signal, you got to talk to IT practitioners. So we love that practitioner view, peers talking to peers at this event, 23,000 people, and there's a lot of customers that are helping each other solve problems and just getting some new ideas. Jay Benson is here. He's an IT practitioner from eHealth in Saskatchewan, Canada. Jay, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much for taking the time to come on. Thank you, great to be here. So we were talking off camera, this is your first VMworld. It's a, it's a great event that's really evolved over the year, but the core of it is the IT practitioner audience. It's a it's show for guys like you. So right. what are your initial impressions? Oh, it's, a, it's an impressive place. Uh, 23,000 plus people, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, just the amount of uh, people and knowledge sharing that's going on, it's uh, um, learning opportunities, it's absolutely incredible. Any particular highlights for you this year, things that you were hoping to learn, or any surprises, or other things that you didn't expect that uh, you're going to take back? Well, you mentioned, you mentioned talking to practitioners. That's part of, part of what I like to do, is talk to others that are trying to do similar things to what we're doing, mm -hmm. and leverage that knowledge, and leverage that experience, and, and uh, you know, learn from others is, is uh, pretty huge for me. And uh, so looking forward to that and have, have engaged in a lot of that activity already. So talk so about eHealth, tell us, tell us about the organization and, and sure. your role so there. Sure, so eHealth Saskatchewan is a, is a crown corporation within the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, we look after and are mandated to support the electronic health record for the province of Saskatchewan. So we look after um, essentially the, the medical history of all of the citizens of the province, just over a million people. Uh, in terms of things like diagnostic imagery, uh, um, uh, prescriptions, um, uh, immunization records, birth and death records, things of that kind of nature, clinical encounters, so that our medical practitioners have a full history of, of every person's visit and uh, journey through the health system as they, as they work and as they move. So well, I, I interview a lot of uh, health healthcare practitioners and providers in the U.S. and you know, the health system here is quite a bit different than it is <laughs> yes, in Canada. It is. <laughs> and so you, the, the drivers and the pressures are all around, certainly around compliance, I'm sure you've faced many of those, but you know, things like electronic medical records and, and here it's meaningful use, and they right. demonstrate use in order to get paid. What are the drivers in Canada? Uh, so very similar um, in terms of providing information and, and things of that nature, but as you mentioned, healthcare in Canada is, is government funded. And in days of, of reduced budgets and uh, doing more with less, that's, that's really the goal in, for all of us, is to make sure that we're delivering a, an excellent service, a service that our practitioners use, because ultimately it's about patient care, but doing so in a, in a cost-effective manner, uh, which is one of our core drivers. We're always architecting for cost, is maybe the best way to think of that, okay. as well as capability and functionality, obviously. Yeah, so yeah, those, those things sometimes are counterposed, but yeah, <laughs> yes, that's, that's, yes, that's what makes your job interesting. So, all right, so let's yes, talk it's about- Yes, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your, 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 your environment, your infrastructure, the applications, just sure. paint a picture for us. If sure, you so uh, we're a single data center today, and we support, as I mentioned, uh, electronic health records for just over a million people in the province. Uh, each of those systems that I mentioned, um, you know, pharmacy, uh, electronic records, uh, immunization records, things of that nature, are all si disparate systems today, uh, which means we do an awful lot of work around integrations. Uh, integrations is core to what we do. There's uh, um, also within the province, there's 13 individual health regions that look after a lot of their own systems too that we have to collect at a provincial level to, to aggregate that record for everybody, which means not only are we integrating with ourselves, we're integrating with our partners within the health sector. And that's an awful lot of work, as you can imagine. It's an awful lot of uh, data normalization, data stewardship type issues, things of that nature that, that are, are just core required to come up with one single record for every individual person. So obviously you're a, a, a VMware account. We are. Um, so, I mean, can you give us a picture sure. of, you know, how many servers, how much storage, <laughs> sure, number of VMs, sure, you know, the sure. basics. So we're, uh, uh, 
currently sitting at uh, just over 1,000 production machines. Uh, they're roughly a 60%, 40% split between uh, the VMware and Intel stack and, uh, and a mid-range stack. Uh, so we cover, we cover an awful lot of technology within our, within our scenario. On the uh, Intel side of that equation or the VMware side of that equation, we're about 90% virtualized today, 95% virtualized today. And that's just over 800 production servers, uh, almost twice that in terms of our non-production environments um, uh, between development and user acceptance testing. Okay, so obviously, so you know, it's funny. We, we talk, we've been talking all week. We, we started doing the Cube in 2010 at VMworld, and the discussion back then was, well, what percent virtualized right, to you? And it's like, right. well, I'm 30%, and I want to get to 50% <laughs> by next year, you know, right? So, so you've been through that journey, yes, so now yes. it's like, now it's cloud uh, and it's correct, mobile, and correct. so you've got a whole new set of challenges, and one of the ones that we're going to talk about here is sort of end user computing and, yep, and, yep. and mobile. So, and that places huge you know, pressure on the infrastructure by talking about traffic moving east-west instead of just north-south. Absolutely. And you've, got, you've got flash coming in and moving bottlenecks <laughs> around and everything just, once you think yes. you get to the end of that journey, boom, a whole new one begins. Yeah, you so, start uh, again, yes. Great, so you're on a new <laughs> S-curve, love it. So let's talk about sort of the the end user computing piece, sure. what you're doing, some people call it VDI, sure. or I guess, I so, know, whatever the new word is. Yeah, so we might, we might move around a couple of things here, but uh, fundamentally we're working on three major projects right now. Uh, end user computing or VDI is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to explain that, I gotta back up just a little bit. So we're, we're also in the midst of standing up two new data centers. As I mentioned, we are single today. We're moving to a, to a dual data center model. And the intention there is redundancy and reliability for our, for our end users and our practitioners. Uh, so that involves a significant amount of work in terms of new equipment, new hardware, new gear, new setups, all of which is going to run uh, what is essentially a private cloud for the health sector within the province. And one of the core services that's going to be offered out of that private cloud is end user computing or VDI. Okay. Right, so there, there uh, a series of steps for us. And particularly in the, in the end user compute space, our, our intention is around delivering a consistent experience for our end users. Because uh, when it comes right down to it, Saskatchewan's a fairly large geography. Um, in terms of, of comparison, we're about the size of Texas, uh, but only just over a million people, which means we're spread out across the entire province. And which means our facilities and, and the places where our patients go are spread out across that province. But to centralize everything in two data centers, we worry about latency, we worry about uh, user experience. So end user computing is going to do a couple of things for us. The biggest one is to bring those, bring those desktops closer to our applications within the data center, allows the power of the data center to expose that speed to our end users on the slow end of those remote links where all we're passing is screenshots for them. The other thing it does is security. Um, we're, as you can imagine with medical records, we're all about personally identifiable information. We're all about legislation and, and worrying about keeping control of that. So keeping that data within our data centers allows us that control, and, uh, but at the same time allows, allows people to access and use it. Okay. So VDI is very key to us. So let's unpack that project sure. a little bit. So you're putting in an end user computing solution from, from EMC. We had yes. those guys on earlier this week and they were sort of describing that stack. You're in the early right. stages of doing that. But so what's the problem that you're trying to solve and what, is, what are you sure. actually deploying? Sure, so I'm gonna back up a little bit in order to set some more context for you. Uh, eHealth Saskatchewan, from an IT perspective, we're also looking at moving towards a managed service provider uh, approach mm -hmm. for the health sector. So moving away from that traditional enterprise and more to a, more to a service delivery type of model. And, and what, one of the things that, that we're offering as part of that is desktop as a service. Because as I mentioned, those 13 health regions that we have tend to do things in disparate ways. It's just simply because they're 13 organizations, each with their own budget, each with their own approach. What happens unfortunately though with that is an inconsistent approach, particularly around user experience. Right, a lot of our practitioners tend to move between regions, which means they do things one way in one office, one thing, one way in a different facility, and that causes them, them angst and concern, as mm -hmm. you can imagine. So we're looking to standardize that and standardize that delivery, which will make their experience better. Right? In order to do that, um, we had to look for a, a solution that would help us get down that path very quickly, and that's where uh, EMC and the Federation and VMware came, came into the fore. Uh, for us. Uh, you've been talking to others all week about uh, the end user compute platform and what's happening there. For us, 
uh, that, was, that was a key differentiator. It was around time to market, it was around an engineered solution that we know will work uh, when we get there. As opposed to, we could build it ourselves, we could have built it ourselves, uh, but that's a lengthy endeavor. You know, we figured that was 18 to 24 months uh, minimum. We're not sure we can wait that long when yeah. it comes right down to it. The demands on us around that user experience, around some new facilities that are being built, and new models within of delivery within the province around uh, efficiency and, and sessions following me from room to room, uh, from our practitioner standpoint, that's absolutely key. And, I, and we can't wait two years to get to that. So the time to market of this particular piece and, and the VMware stack that allows the, the orchestration and the automation and the self-serve and the, the cost models are, are absolutely imperative to us. It's just the way, it, so, the way it needs to be. So what does that, I, I mean, I recall from the description of the, the, the solution, it, it had some flexibility in there right. in terms of you know, the, the, the storage infrastructure, obviously it's UCS or you know, the, yep. the V block, and, but then the higher levels up the stack. So what did you actually, you know, how did you compose <laughs> that solution? Because it, it was semi-composable. Right, if I right, yeah, so there are some pieces that you, yeah. could, you could add or subtract yeah. as, as needed. Um, we've been an EMC customer for many years uh, in terms of our storage approach and uh, I wanted to continue to leverage that investment. So from a storage perspective, we're very much a build our own kind of an approach here. We, we, we've made some significant investments under the new data center project around uh, individual chunks of hardware, both compute and, and uh, storage, and we decided to leave that in place. So one of the core functionality uh, or flexibility pieces that we gained out of the UC solution was the fact that you, we could almost build our own mm -hmm. and then layer the software stack on top of it. So it allows us to continue to leverage the EMC investment we've already made in terms of core storage and data replication and data redundancy pieces, uh, layer the UCS platform on top of that from a Cisco perspective and compute, and then finally layer the VMware software stack on top of that uh, to get us to that point of, of higher virtualization, higher portability, uh, consistent user, develop, user uh, experience, and, and the ability to wrap automation and, and orchestration around all of that to make our, st our staff and our team much more efficient. And, and you're doing NSX as part of this? Uh, in a small way, yes. Um, so you're dipping your toe in We're NSX, dipping our toes right? in so NSX, this is a, this, yes. You know, you get, again, you get, you let's squint through the market. <laughs> well, NSX sure. is going to, yeah, it's everywhere, but okay. And you talk to practitioners like, yeah, you know, we're interested and we're trying yeah. it. So what's your take on, on, sure. on NSX? Sure, we are interested and, and I certainly see uh, NSX and, and by extension software defined networking uh, in, our, in our roadmap and in our, in our go forward plans. Uh, what we're trying to do now is, as, as you said, just dip our toes in the mm -hmm. water. Part of that, particularly with the end user computing solution, uh, I mentioned two data centers that we're going to run this out of. NSX in this case is going to be used to help assist with the uh, high availability of the management nodes that will control that end user experience. We want to make sure that those nodes are available in either data center when needed, and part of the engineered solution relies on NSX to do that. As we move forward, uh, items like uh, policy-driven security, like micro-segmentation, uh, we see a lot of potential in those and expect at some point in our roadmap we will take advantage of them. Uh, right now we're, as we said, kicking the tires a little bit and, and trying to see how, how that will actually apply in a healthcare setting. Make sure we can leverage it with some of our legacy applications that we still need to deal with. Jay, as you bring together these so-called converged solutions, whether it's you know hardware converged solutions or things like NSX, which is more of a software convergence, how does the or does your organization change, or is it you're a sort of smaller organization <laughs> and you don't ha you don't have all these sort of silos of pockets of expertise centers? Uh, right. Is you more you more looking for that solution? Can you describe that? Sure. The sure. So. Piece? Um, very much today, we're, we're a traditional IT shop, as, mm -hmm. as you can imagine, you know, individual people that are, that are there to deal with each silo or tower of technology, storage people, network people. So you have people. expertise centers. I mean, you know, we, we right. always talk about silos in a pejorative, but there's right. a good side of silos, too, is you got a oh, ton absolutely. of expertise, you know, you got <laughs> absolutely. guys absolutely. that really know their and, stuff. And, but yeah, they're off in their silos, that's and true. They're, and they're very good at it, yeah. and, and we actually have a, we have a very good team, and, and mm -hmm. I put them against uh, just about anybody. Um, but what we're seeing as part of this convergence is, and more software defined, is they're going to become less a silo individual team and more of a data center services or data center 
uh, operations team. And that's really the, the view. In fact, all of those operations teams within the organization currently report to one person. And his title is Manager Data Center Services. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's why, is, is to try to drive some of those synergies so that we can leverage the expertise that these people have in a little more efficient manner. You know, the, today the very traditional workflow of, uh, you know, when I request a new machine, I, I have to go through the steps to get, get uh, the servers provisioned and the storage provisioned and the load balancer set up and the applications <laughs> installed. And when it comes right down to it, our goal is to provide a better service to uh, our medical practitioners within the province, which ultimately relates to patient care. And when it comes right down to it, doing those individual steps doesn't really add that value. Mm -hmm. What I'd much rather those people doing is worrying about the availability, the reliability, the, the ex user experience that goes with that, getting the right data to the right people at the right time in the right manner. And we see automation and standardization as a way to do that, right? and which, which almost inevitably will lead to the convergence of those towers. So you're embracing that automation. Well, Absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of IT practitioners I talk to, you know, they, they say, yeah, it's, <laughs> We're headed in that direction, but they're afraid of, of automation. Right. They don't want to give up control. They like having the knobs and dials uh, right. to right. turn. But, uh, but you, are you feeling like you're, you're through that you um, know, inertia? We're, we're a little bit early in that okay. one yet. Okay. Uh, we're still working through some of that. The change management, organizational change management is always, is always tough, right? And, and there's a lot of different ways of doing things. And you're right, control is a big thing. Most IT people like control. <laughs> and Control freaks, for a good reason. Exactly, you know? <laughs> and for very good reason. And, you know, that may sound negative, and it isn't, right? It's, 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 very, it's a very good point. What we are trying to do is move to more of that standard way of doing things, which allows us to take all of the best practices that they already know and wrap it into a repeatable process so that it isn't onerous on those people to do the same job anymore. It allows us to slow down the treadmill that they're on a little bit and provide uh, a little different value. So your justification for this EMC, you know, EUC solution was the standardization piece. Yes. You know, and the speed, Primarily. You know, and yep. the, and the, and the, and the, the, the the solution itself was differentiable and that sort of was right. the allure. Right. Did, you, did you have to quantify all that? Um, to a certain extent, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can imagine, with any, any type of large investment like this, you're looking at business cases to do that yeah. and, and everything else. Uh, so we did spend a significant amount of time looking at how our organization operates, the services that we can provide to the rest of the health sector, and uh, uh, looking at particularly, again, that user experience, uh, the security pieces, and the, the delivery mechanisms that we have. As a fairly distributed province, we worry about latency, as I mentioned before. We spend a lot of time measuring that latency and looking at the potential impact of centralizing that application delivery uh, out of two data centers mm -hmm. uh, to t try to help quantify our approach and why we're, gonna, why we're, we're moving down this mm -hmm. path. Um, you mentioned it's a federation solution. Yes, it is. There's a lot of talk, eh, not a lot, there's a lot of talk leading up to the show about the whole <laughs> federation, and I'm always interested in the practitioner's view, because there's not a lot of talk on the floor about what's going on with EMC and VMware right, and Elliott right. management and all that stuff. From an IT practitioner standpoint, do you pay attention to that stuff? Do, do, uh, you, do you care? Do you, do you, obviously you like the federation solution, yes. but is the federation of value to you, or is it just this one point case? And what are no, your thoughts on the whole it's, thing? It's absolutely of value to us, actually. One of the, we're all about outcomes. We're all about getting to the end of the job. And when it comes right down to it, uh, the expectation we have is that this stuff has to work. And the way we see to do that is items like the federation pieces, where you're taking multiple disparate technologies from multiple disparate companies, and you're actually putting, wrapping engineering hours around them to ensure that everything works together the way it should and the way it's supposed to. And then adding on top of that uh, a single support call, which means I can avoid the normal finger pointing that you tend to get into when you have multiple vendors involved in a solution. Right? Well, mine works, well, no, mine works. <laughs> no, the problem's over there and, and you just don't get anything done. The fact that this is an agreed upon uh, federation approach already with multiple organizations all driving to that same outcome uh, is of significant benefit to us. It allows us to deal with that single support call. It allows us to uh, have that solution built uh, with our staff and, and beside them, but in a manner that we know is going to work. 
and get us significantly further down the path in a hurry, as opposed to, again, doing it ourselves, like I mentioned. Awesome. Well, Jay, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's really a pleasure oh, meeting you. You too. Sharing your practitioner knowledge with our, with our audience. Great stuff. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Moscone, VMworld 2015. Be right back.